guys, so I'm on the back side of our Walter Helitronic Vision 400L from United Grinding. We've showed you guys some programming videos, some other tutorials, and some like really cool machining videos like the bone pin and our lollipop. But you know, maybe you're uh, getting a little bit more motivated to try to get on one of these machines. Maybe you have one in your shop. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys how to get this machine up and running. So next we're gonna turn on our oil cooler. Now this is really important because it's going to filter out all the carbide swarf in our grinding oil. This is full of Blazer HC10 grinding oil. It's really great for cutting carbide. It gives us that lubricity we need, but this machine is gonna keep that grinding oil at the ambient temperature of our machine shop. So when I turn this on, we've got this set to 75 degrees it's gonna ensure that we get part-to-part -part repeatability when we're grinding our tools, which is incredibly important. Now, when we're talking about the health and safety of the operator, we also have on the top of the machine, an LNS Fox HE1000 mist extractor. It's gonna take all the, uh, the oil vapor out of the machine, and also it's gonna help to mitigate any potential fires we can have since we are cutting with grinding oil. Now, you don't have to turn on the mist extractor. It will automatically turn on for you when you start a program. All right, so now that we're powered up in the back, we're just gonna simply hit this white button. That's gonna power on the machine. Then we're gonna open up our Tool Studio software, which is where we're gonna do all of our programming. Now that the machine's powered on, we have our Tool Studio software up. We're ready to do some programming. We gotta set the machine up, similar to most CNC machines, you have to home this machine in order to do anything on it. So we're gonna make sure that the doors are shut first because this machine will not function properly unless all the doors are locked and shut. That needs to be shut. And we also have this third door, which is our wheel changer, and that's good. We have this selector switch here, which is for robot, automatic, and manual. So we're gonna turn the key to automatic mode Make sure the machine is in auto. And then we're gonna hit ABS all move. And that's gonna put the machine in its default home position. Now that the machine's in its default home position, I can go about my business, do some loading, do whatever I need to do. What I wanna show you real quick is the various axes. This is a five axis grinder. In order to move any of the axes manually, we gotta be in jog mode. And then we'll select any axis that I wanna move. And then we'll hit one of the positive or negative buttons to move that axis in that direction. The A axis rotates about your work head. So that's spinning back and forth. This is the C axis rotating about the Y axis. Y axis moves up and down. The Z axis works on the spindle axis. So similar on like a lathe, right? If your part's spinning on an axis, that's your Z axis. That's the same on this machine and that goes left to right. And then we have our X axis, which moves the whole work head back and forward. One of the unique things about this machine, whenever you shut the door, you gotta push the button. When you wanna open the door, you gotta push the button. Each door has its own button, but all the icons for the door buttons are the same. Machine, loader, and wheel changer. Generally, if you're like unable to do something, you think, oh, I'm gonna try and home the machine and it won't work and you get an error, Chances are it's like one of four things. Either one of the doors is open, there's a weird error that you haven't fixed yet, this key is in the wrong position, it's either left in automatic or manual, or the machine's not in the default home position. Make sure that the four of those things are taken care of. So another thing I wanna show you is the wheel changer. We'll bring this controller over here. Go into manual mode, open up the wheel changer. Here I can load my coolant manifolds and my wheels. If I need to move this around, I'm gonna select wheel changer, but you can see it moving. If I close this door, now it moves a lot faster. So now say I needed to get to wheel pack one, I can open the wheel changer door and take these out and change wheels or do whatever I need to do. If you need the, like a smaller specific increment, say you're touching off or recalibrating the machine, you can utilize the various increments. So we have a 100 thou increment, a 10 thou increment, a 1 thou increment, and a 1 tenth increment. And with like say one tenth, each push of a button would move that axis, that one tenth. A reason you'd wanna use a small increment, one button at a time, is if you're calibrating the machine. Now we have this calibration equipment and 
this goes into your work head and this goes into the spindle. Those gotta come together and you gotta actually touch them. So to do that safely, we'd use that 1 10th increment button to ensure that we don't crash these two parts. Now, I will show you in a different video how to properly use this equipment to calibrate this machine. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's how you get the machine up and running. If you have one of these in your shop, I encourage you to take what I did today and put it into practice. Now, I did talk a little bit about some programming with this Walter Tool Studio. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, check out the bone pin programming video I did. It's going to give you a little bit more insight on how to go about using that software. If you got one of these machines in your shop, I encourage you to get on it and have some fun with it. If you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and drop them down below. I love interacting with you guys. So we'll see you guys next time, all right?